real quick about moveset with your gimmick. Have a moveset that fits. Yeah. If you're a heel, don't do flashy shit. I know you can. I know you've got the athleticism and you're like, yeah, but I do this 450 and it makes everyone poop yeah. their pants. Maybe, but how are you telling that as a story? If you've come out here as a villain and you're like, oh, these people suck and blah, 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 and you've done all this heavy lifting yeah. and the crowd's booing you every step of the way, great job. And then you bust out something awesome. Yeah. How was the crowd supposed to react to that? Like, boo, that was the coolest thing I've seen all night. Here's an example, because people I know for a fact are going to challenge that. If you're a heel and you can do cool shit, there's, make it make sense. You want right. an example? Kevin Owens versus John Cena. The first match they had towards the end of the match where Cena's kicking out of everything and he's he's doing cool shit for the first time. Right. Like this forces Kevin Owens like, well, fuck, I got to top that. Then it starts with the moonsault. It starts with the package. Like you're super. pulling things out yes. because it made sense in the story. So in he reference didn't open, to that, he didn't open it with like, watch this moonsault. Like, yeah, exactly. It was just like it had purpose. Like I have to do this stuff to like put him out. Like I'm hitting him. Normally, with normally I would never do this in a million years. Exactly. But tonight I got no other choice. Exactly. So in the reference to that, before you challenge Zach's opinion, watch that match and understand yeah, that. Exactly. Because you, unless you're going to make it make sense in terms of like, let's say you're like super cocky and you're like, oh, I'm the greatest thing that wrestling's ever been, then that's fine. But you need to make sure you're you're giving your cue to the crowd that they should not be impressed with this. Yeah, yeah. Or what I've always suggested, and um, uh, Mar Marcos Espada used to do this, the anti-luchador gimmick, yeah. where he would go up and everyone's like, oh, I'm going to assume he's going to do some cool flippy shit. And he would go up and set up and I was like, oh, and he would go, you don't deserve that. And he would get off the top rope and people wanted him dead. That is the kind of thing to go with. Even if you can do it, hold it away from the crowd if you're yeah. a bad guy. Now, if you're a good guy, you got no reason to not do cool flashy yeah. stuff because that's going to get people to react. <clears throat> but that shouldn't be the only reaction. Yeah. Shout out to Marcos If, to spot, if the crowd is dead silent, except yeah. you did a moonsault once, and they went, ooh, that's not a great job. They should be engaged even when you're just doing... Okay, another example. There was a match with Effie and uh, Stevie Fierce. Mm -hmm. And similar to what you said, they had seen on the card, there was a whole big variety of matches where everyone was going out there and just mm -hmm. killing it. And they looked at each other and they went, we can't out-wrestle these other people who have already come out before us. Mm -hmm. So we need to do something different in order to stand out. And so they had this whole big gaga thing in the beginning where they were basically doing a photo shoot in the ring instead of fighting. Beautiful. They had explained it on Mike. They had cut this big promo. And so they were literally like posing. And then our ringside photographer was taking pictures so that they could post it on social media to give the impression. It had been an unbelievable Beautiful. match. So they're coming up with weird stuff. Stevie fierce has Effie's jacket on at one point and Effie's like, what? And it's <laughs> like, we're telling yeah. stories that didn't happen. Yeah. But when we look back, we'll be like, I, yeah, I guess that has, that's weird. How did I get that set up? And then eventually it became a real match. But it's one of those cases where you can have people engaged and have them react without going like, and here comes the second 450 of the night. Yeah, Those are all elements to keep with. The other thing, and Luna, my wife actually brought this up. When you're in wrestling school, when you're in the training process, figure out one thing that you can do incredibly well. And that doesn't have to be the flashiest thing. There was a reason why in a previous era wrestlers had a thing that they had to their name. Jake the Snake Roberts was doing the DDT because he was doing it the best. He was doing it better than anybody. Yeah. There's a reason why 175 years later, anybody who hits a spine buster, they go, ooh, Arn Anderson would yeah. approve because yeah. Arn was doing it the best. Yeah. So I think a great example of that is Kiko Harris. Yeah. Kiko Harris for what? Like two years now has absolutely been putting in the work. He delivers one of the best drop kicks yeah. for a dude whose size shouldn't be throwing drop kicks. Yeah. You would never expect it. Yeah. And he has a picture perfect drop kick, yeah. a move that everybody does. But when Kiko throws it in a match, you go, Oh my God. Yeah. Like it is that was worth the price of admission. The first time I've, I've only heard the legend of Kiko Harris right. at this point, but like, uh, he was on a show. I want to say it was a, I forgot the show what it was, but first time I, I didn't know this guy from a hole in the wall, but in this match against the dynasty, he silent match hits the drop kick and I'm on my feet for some reason. It's like, <laughs> Holy shit. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Never seen him work a match before. Only heard stories about him. Never heard. They didn't mention the drop kick yet. But when I saw that, I was like, 
This is the guy. This is the one right here. <laughs> At the Nova birthday bash. Yeah. They were fighting and he threw that drop kick out. And that crowd, you would have thought that somebody did like 10 moon salts in a row yeah. because yeah. it looks that good. So when you're coming up with a move set, make sure you're doing stuff that makes sense with your character. Not just like, well, I can do this. Yeah, but does your character do that? Does that make sense for your character to be yeah. doing? And uh, on top of that, it doesn't have to be all death defying like, hey, tonight might be the night I'm breaking my neck. No. <laughs> Figure out something that you can do remarkably well and then focus on that and really make that mean something because it will resonate. Yeah. Even if everyone's seen a thousand drop kicks that night, if yours just looks that much better, it's going to stand out to people. Yes. Uh, oh, an American Beetle, uh, don't be afraid to dive in head first. You want people to believe in your gimmick. You've got to dive in head first. You can't just half-ass it and be like, ah, people will fill in the blanks. They'll figure it out. Yeah. No one's going to do the hard work for you. you got to be committed.